Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us at OpenJS World 2021 for our keynote, Open Open Source and Making Great Places for Collaboration. My name is Joe Seppi. I am an open source engineer at IBM, primarily working in the Node.js space and at the OpenJS Foundation. Uh, Beth? Hi, everyone. My name is Beth Griggs, and I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, where I spend a large portion of my time contributing to the Node.js project. And I'm Michael Dawson. I'm the Node.js lead for Red Hat and IBM. That means I get to spend a lot of my time working in the community, um, various working groups, the technical steering committee, but it also means I get to work with great teams within Red Hat and IBM and people like Joe and Bethany um, in the work that we do for the Node.js in the Node.js space. So we're here to talk about open, open source. And you know, I think the, the reason that we're talking to you is because we're all have been very active in, in the Node project. And, you know, the Node.js experience is where, you know, we've seen that that sort of approach really proved out and, you know, some of the, the advantages and some of the challenges that, that we see. Some of the, the key elements are that, you know, no one company has control. You see a lot of projects out there where they're open source, but usually they're sort of led in the direction is set by a particular company. Node.js has no one company do, you know, doing that. It's really a, a group of companies who, who, who come together. Um, and yeah, interesting, there, sorry, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I was gonna say there are rules in place to kind of prevent that too, uh, which is great. But uh, you know, I, one of the things that I love about the work that we do in, in, in the Node.js space and the way things are set up is that everything is really transparent and accessible. Uh, we try to do all of our work in issues and pull requests and um, you know working groups and, and and things like that. So it's the the barrier to entry is uh, should be the, the doors are open. I'll say. Yeah, certainly that transparency and and the work that we do to make sure that you know anybody can come to the project and work on that level playing field is is sort of a key component. It's it's that if I'm invested in in Node and I want to depend on it. Um, you know, me as an individual and certainly organizations want to have confidence that they can, you know, get involved and move the sticks forward in the areas that are important to them. And, you know, that open, open source approach allows everybody to kind of work on the different areas that they think are important and have the whole project move forward much faster than, you know, I think uh, projects that are driven by a single company, because there's only so much that one person can kind of stick into their head and keep on top of. And, and this sort of distributed approach really lets us, uh, us, us move, you know, forward in all sorts of different ways. Yeah, I, I certainly think that's probably one of the most surprising things people find about the Node.js project is that because we are open, open source and everyone comes in with their own ideas, we don't have a roadmap. Uh, we do have initiatives and ideas and plans, rough plans in place within the working groups about what we might like to do, but there is no, we want to deliver this by this day. Um, and I, I think people do tend to find that surprising, but it is an outcome of us having not one single company or organization driving the project. Yeah, and certainly what seems to come out, you know, what comes out in a release is what people have, have decided is important and worked on, and it's sort of an amalgamation of that all across the way. And you mentioned we don't have, you know, a, a defined roadmap. That doesn't mean we don't have plans and goals and things that we think are important. We, you know, the working groups and teams are, are bring together people who are working on areas that are, are of interest to them. So, you know, the, the people who look at the, you know, work on, on the build side of things, the people who work on, say, new HTTP clients. So there's lots of people who come together with sort of a vision of where they think they want the project to get to. But we don't necessarily have that as a top-down driven effort. It's more of a, a bottom-up, here are the people coming. And I think that's actually one of the really interesting things about the, the sort of open open source approach and, and what makes the Node experience, you know, really interesting to me anyway. Uh, so yeah, people are very surprised um, that they can just turn up to the project, contribute a PR, start participating in issues, um, or start joining our meetings. All our meetings tend to be open for everyone. And to join, you can um, find the calendar and just join them. Um, and I think people do find that surprising. They need to know that the project's open in that way for anyone to turn up and join. Um, and that does come with the challenge of making people feel comfortable. And, and we have worked hard to try and uh, lower the barrier to entry so people are comfortable in doing that. 
Yeah, I know I often get that question like, well, how do I join the meeting? And the answer is there's a Zoom link. You can show up. You can participate just like everybody else. But sort of making sure people are comfortable and then comfortable to speak up, um, you know, is an, is an ongoing effort within the, the project. And then similarly, sort of, you know, people being comfortable that they could lead a particular area. So, you know, the, the project, we have some really good experience in Node Core, but it actually covers a, a very broad range. So people can come to the project and have some domain experience, which is really, really useful. And in fact, they may know more about that particular area than anybody in the project and making them feel comfortable enough to, to bring that experience and share it is uh, you know one of the things that we need to continually sort of work on and, and remind people that they can they can do that. What one of the things that worked well within the release working group, which was one of the working groups I'm particularly active in, is uh, we set up some mentoring sessions. Um, so in the calendar, we blocked off an hour every couple of weeks, uh, where anyone who had an interest of joining the release working group and maybe eventually producing helping to produce the releases of Node. Uh, could join and just shadow the process, ask questions, learn about how they can pick it up and pick up a release. And we found that worked really well. I think we onboarded around about three, three new releases from those sessions. And it's not it's not an easy task to grasp. It's not something you can just like read a doc and then get on with it. And so I think it was really valuable. It was really great to get new people onto the project and help out. Yeah, it seems that that particular effort uh, was 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 success very successful. Uh, I've seen the the release team grow, and that's really fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and the mentorship uh, program overall in in the Node.js space has has uh, had other successes as well. I know Michael, uh, there's a recent uh, mentee for the Node. Yeah. API. Yep, and that that's something where you know that helped them feel comfortable to come in and work with us. Know they'd have people who would talk to them and. It, it, it makes me think that, you know, we try and do everything in GitHub as much as we can to be transparent, to, to let people participate across the time zones. But at least for me, that, that sort of personal touch of being able to talk to people um, sometimes is invaluable in making that, you know, somebody comfortable and, and being able to ask the questions in a little bit maybe more comfortable situation than, you know, mm -hmm. putting them into it to GitHub. So I think that, that that part's a key thing that we'll need to continue to work on. Yeah. That's a good point. I think that, you know, um, there are lots of ways to get involved, whether through, you know, GitHub and the issues and such, but also, like you said, the, the personal touch stuff with, with Slack um, and, and, and in the meetings as well. I guess the flip side, though, of making, you know, bringing more and more people into the, uh, the project and making them comfortable to speak up, which is which was what we want, is that it, consensus can actually be can be hard sometimes. The more people we get involved, the more different views there are. Um, and so sometimes that actually can can be a bit of a challenge for the project. Like, how do we get to a, an answer when we've got lots of different views? And and my personal view is is that sometimes it should be hard. If we're making a a, a big decision, it's better to have that stretch out a little bit longer um, to to factor in all the different views. And often I've seen that result in a in a better decision in the end. It, I'll admit it can be quite tiring. And you know we, you know that's one of our challenges is how do we find the right balance there because we don't want people to be so exhausted from the discussions that they don't want to contribute anymore. But at the same time, you know I, I think we need to not rush some of these discussions because we we need to get everybody's input and see if we can find something where where there is a consensus. Yeah, I think balance is the key word there for sure. And I think you know in terms of getting people's input. <clears throat> A good example is the the surveys work that we've been doing, um, you know, with with the next ten effort and the unhandled promise rejection work. Um, those are really great ways to get people's input. Um, yeah, and that's like not necessarily a survey to decide the question, but to give us some additional input and context for how how, how we try and you know come to a to a, a consensus within the project itself. Mm -hmm. And. The project's structured in a way that when it comes to it, uh, we have the technical steering committee that can vote on um, particular issues, topics, PRs, where consensus hasn't been able to be met for, for a significant portion of time. But the we do try to avoid that. We hope that consensus can be resolved out in the community amongst the wider collaborator contributor base, 
rather than being elevated to the seat to make a decision. But obviously, in some cases, if it's gone on for a few months, you do want that kind of escape hatch to um, make sure that things can move forward and, and not just indefinitely blocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cons consensus can be challenging, but I think it's uh, it's it's definitely a feature. And and you know, when we merged the two foundations together, the JS Foundation and the Node.js Foundation, to form the OpenJS Foundation, we took a lot of the learnings that we had in in you know, building this open open source uh, space in the Node.js Foundation and tried to bring that over to the OpenJS Foundation, which I think, you know, uh, has has been successful. Yeah, I think I think it. You know, and one of the reasons why that makes so much sense is that the project, the Node.js experience, it embodies a lot of those things that are important for individuals and companies who want to rely on um, you know packages and products and projects in their production environments it, it has that you know sort of open and level playing field where you know if you if you come and you can contribute you can move things forward your voice is heard we take everybody's views in, into into the consensus versus you know if you have a project which is predominantly run say from by your competitor you may not be as nearly as comfortable as depending on that as as one that would be under this kind of model and the OpenJS Foundation is a great place to sort of foster that experience because if you if you move from say a single company, uh, you know, supporting the open source project, you need somebody else, some other organization to step in and take up some of the pieces that they would have done. You know, providing the things like Zoom accounts and emailing lists and just sort of the basic resources that are available within a company but aren't necessarily freely available to an open source project unless they're part of a foundation or something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. It's like, it's a single home for, you know, the JS ecosystem um, to be, you know, stable and, um, you know, a, a, a growing well, you know, and especially for companies who want to support that work. But like you said, it's, it's, it's a place to grow that work as well, to have the support from the foundation, to do things like the surveys, um, the package maintenance work and, and there's, you know, there's, there's so much stuff that we can do to really support the community at the foundation level. Yeah. And the other thing I'm, I'm kind of excited about, I'll just quickly mention is like the collaboration spaces. So the foundation, you know, from the beginning has supported projects and collaboration spaces are another way where we can support discussions, initiatives, which are not necessarily a project, but are also very important to the ecosystem, the Java eco ecosystem overall. Yeah, and we can we can talk a moment too about like why why people get involved, and I think you know that that collaboration space is a great place to get involved. But like, you know, you in my experience uh, working at companies that use open source, you know, you want to get involved in the project and help uh, you know fix bugs, keep things stable. Uh, you may need features. You know, there's so many different reasons why you would want to get involved in, in open source. Yeah, I yeah. find. So oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bethany. As, yeah, uh, I find um, maybe folks at smaller or medium-sized companies sometimes struggle to get their uh, employers to appreciate why they should contribute to open source. And I found over time the best way of it being framed is if you're consuming these projects in your company and consuming open source and using it to stand upon and deliver your service. Um, by allowing your employees to contribute, you're actually helping manage the risk. Because uh, if someone stops maintaining that dependency or the open source project you're using, uh, you're gonna be rather stuck and you will have to invest that time. So why not upfront try to uh, invest some time spread out across you know, your development year to just help keep these uh, dependencies st stable. Yeah, and I guess in, in terms of the risk is like I often see issues which are like, hey, I'm having this problem. And then you can see people are getting frustrated in those issues because somebody doesn't immediately answer them. But like the, the reality is you're using a project, you're not paying anybody to support you for that project. So if people are helping you, that's because, you know, they're volunteering their time. They think it's in the project's overall best interest. But you shouldn't depend on somebody else necessarily being able to, to have that time for you when you need it. And by letting your employees in, be involved and help maintain the things you depend on, you can help yourself. And that's really the position you want to be in 
you know, to either work with a partner who will help you or to to be able to help yourself in those projects. So it's important to contribute, you know, either directly or indirectly to the open source projects that are that are really important to you. Yeah, I think too, you know, at like a personal level, you you gain amazing skills in working in open source that are, are valuable to a company, being able to work well with others and and find consensus and and you know uh, work through certain issues that come up uh, often in open source. Um, it's it's definitely a skill <clears throat> to uh, to appreciate, and then also, you know, it's a great place to hire too. Uh, a, a previous company I worked at, we did a lot of work in open source, and we hired a couple of really great people uh, uh, through that, and I, I got to see them go on to to do really great things in open source through that work. Yeah. Yes, yeah. certainly the skills that you grow, you learn in an open source project, apply to working in a larger company at least, um, where you know you're trying to get things done, you don't can't necessarily tell what people what to do when you have to work together in a collaborative manner. I mean, I think it, it, you got to do that in every in any kind of company. So they're really great skills to learn. Yeah, and it's a really great way of building building your personal kind of brand around the work you're doing. And I've seen so many people um, on their resumes and CVs just say calling out their open source contributions, which is great to see. It's great that you can do the work in a place where the broader community can see what you're doing. And yeah, that, that's a really good, really good uh, note. So that's kind of why to get involved. Um, and there are some kind of key ways you could start to get involved with the OpenJS Foundation and the projects within the foundation. Um, so first, um, it's worth looking at all the projects in the foundation, uh, there's around 30 or so, and seeing whether what there are ones that you use, you're particularly experienced with, or maybe just have a, an interest in that given area, and maybe look at that project and see if they have good first issues or things like that. And particularly if you're looking to get involved uh, within the Node.js project itself, we do have the structure within the project with the teams and working groups. And I, I find a good way to find to get involved is to look at the list of team and working groups, and again, um, if there's one that particularly resonates with your interests or your area, um, check out their GitHub repository, join their calls, which will be on the OpenJS Foundation calendar. And all, uh, all the calls are open to everyone. You should be able to stream them on YouTube, going back to the open, open source. And um, we try to stream all of our meetings, so all of our decisions are there for everyone to see. Um, and yeah, so everyone's welcome to join the meetings, uh, joining events like in JS World is just a few of the ways you can get involved. Yeah, I, 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 as we said before, it's a great way to make the personal connection, those teams and working groups. The other thing I'd recommend is like, try and you know work within your company to get them to actually support your work to make it more than just your side job because you know we're lucky you know ibm and red hat are very supportive it's part of you know we have a portion of our time to, to work in the community and that actually makes it a lot easier to, to to contribute so um you know working within the company to help them understand that you're actually reducing their risk and that you you know you'll be there to help um you know fix issues, identify issues in some of these key components that they're depending on, I think is, is also a good component in terms of like how to be able to contribute in a more sustained and, and sort of long-term long -term manner. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, you know, reiterate, I, I feel very fortunate that uh, IBM and Red Hat supports the work that we do. And, and really, I think, you know, they see the value in the work that we do and, and, and contributing to open source um, as it pertains to their business. Um, but, you know, we to, to kind of get back to the whole open open source thing and to just sort of reiterate what Beth was saying as well, like uh, there there are lots of ways to get involved. Um, again, you know, issues, pull requests, um, uh, openjsf.org slash collaborate will give you a bunch of resources in terms of joining the Slack um, and and the calendar. Uh, nojs.org slash calendar is where all the Nojs uh, uh, calendar um, uh, lives. And again, I just, you know, you can join a meeting, you can join a Slack, start talking to people. Um, you know, even if you want to join a meeting and just kind of hang out and see what's going on, that's fine too. Um, just uh, get involved and, and, and see what, uh, where your interests lie and, 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 and start looking there. Um, I guess at this point, that's probably all the time that we have. Thanks to, for coming and watching our keynote. Hopefully we've given you a little bit of insight into, 
you know, the well, the open open source approach that the Node Node.js project has, some of the the things that are going on, and 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 have sort of inspired you to get involved if you're not not involved already. And you know, we hope to see you in GitHub and across the projects. Thanks. Talk to you later.